Bill Cadogan is a name that a lot of Hardcore 100 viewers will instantly recognize, but it's a name that if you were a casual watcher and you've been watching on Netflix, maybe haven't been, ta been paying the most attention to, might be a name that you don't recognize right away, and that's what I'm making this video for. I'm gonna go back right when this character was first introduced into the 100s lore, and bring you up to speed on everything we know about this character, everything that you can know about Bill Cadogan, as it's pretty clear he's going to play a pretty major role into the end game of the 100. But before I get started on him, if you guys like the 100 as I do and you want to see more 100 content, just leave a like, subscribe for theories on the show and the review as we go into the last episodes of the series. Now let's get into Bill Cadogan. Cadogan's introduction to the 100's lore goes back to the season 4 episode 3, The Four Horsemen it was titled, in case you want to go back and take a look at that scene. It's only about a minute and a half features Clark, Bellamy, and Jaha driving to this bunker, and if you want to go back and see it, you can check it out on Netflix or where, however you watch the episodes. It's definitely an important thing to see again because it was so long ago, it was three, four years ago since that aired. The reason why they even checked out that video was because Jaha was suggesting a way to save everyone from the from the impending death wave that would soon cover the earth, and he suggested this bunker that was built by a doomsday cult called the Second Dawn. Sound familiar because you've heard that name multiple times this season. The video shown by Jaha to Clark and Bellamy was before the first nuclear apocalypse that occurred a century before the events of the series began. Jaha shows Clark and Bellamy a video of the Second Dawn's leader, Bill Cadogan, who is played by John Piper Ferguson. During his brief appearance, Cadogan is shown warning the end is coming to a packed audience two weeks before the nuclear apocalypse and saying join me join us and together when the horsemen come from the ashes we will rise while the first bunker jaha finds turns out to be an uninhabitable decoy meant to dupe lower level second dawn members and filled with their remains the true second dawn bunker is later found directly underneath polis in the episode god complex and indeed saves the lives at least initially of 1200 people People at the end of season 4. One other thing that's worth noting is that Cadogan's From the Ashes We Will Rise motto was important enough to be the tagline for the 100 season 4, and we would see a flag with that message inside the bunker and upon coins used by the Second Dawn. What also stuck out about the true Second Dawn bunker that was found in the episode God Complex is that it was totally empty when first discovered by Jaha, Kane, Monty, Indra, and Gaia, with no real answers provided as to why. Now, why didn't we get any answers back then about it? Why were these all just kind of left up in the air? Well, we do have some answers. The 100's executive producer and showrunner Jason Rothenberg had been quoted saying, Going into Season 7, one of the big things I wanted to accomplish was fill in some of the blanks. One of those blanks was why the second Don bunker was empty when our heroes opened it in Season 4. Theoretically, it should have been filled with whoever was part of the second Don cult. Either their bodies or it should have been another Mount weather, but it was totally empty. And the mystery of that was something that meant we were going to deal with the Second Dawn cult. A year after the bunker was introduced, Season 5's episode The Warrior's Will gave us some more info about Cadogan, specifically that he was apparently responsible for the death of Becca. Maddie at the time, who was having nightmares involving previous grounder commanders, yells, Cadogan, please, you're making a mistake, I can save you, as we see images of Becca being burnt at the stake by people in hazmat suits. Now beyond that, we pretty much got nothing really relating to the second down, that was pretty much the only really thing, they've been kind of just filling in the these blanks to this story of this cult a little bit over the course of each season. In season 7, the second Dawn once again became significant on the frozen burial planet of Nakara, when their symbol was discovered by Miller and Nyla, who both lived in the bunker for six years following the death wave, and were baffled how that symbol came to be on this far-off planet. Meanwhile, while they were on that planet, season 7 also introduced the disciples on the planet Bardo, led by Anders, who were the ones sending their dead to to 
Nakara, a group who were known to worship someone that they called the Shepherd. Most notably, Orlando was heard to say, from the ashes through the bridge the Shepherd will rise. A twist on the same from the ashes phrase that Kadogan himself had introduced. All this finally came together in last night's episode, in the Queen's Gambit, as Anders awakens a cryogenically frozen Bill Kadogan, once again played by Piper Ferguson, while referring to him as my Shepherd. I should also mention that Jason Rothenberg did confirm that the descendants of the Second Dawn cult are the people on Bardo. What was notable with Kadogan's Season 4 setup was the decision to show him at all in the video, given he could have simply just been mentioned. Rothenberg revealed that they had always casted Piper Ferguson with the intention to use him again, explaining, Back then we definitely wanted to use him more, there was an intention to tell that story more fully. I remember promising him back then that there would be more than just one episode. Rothenberg also said originally as season 4 progressed, it was entirely possible when we opened that bunker we would have discovered the descendants, at least of the second dawn, and the cryogenics could have come into play then as well to bring Kadogan himself back in season 4. The story took a different turn and it did take all these years to get back to it, he says. When they decided it was time to finally have Kadogan show up in season 7, fortunately John Piper Ferguson was available and persuadable, so he came on board, Rothenberg added, that while it took far longer than expected, I did make good on my promise because he's definitely a big part of the story going forward. Now that Kadogan is in the present day story, next week we're going to be getting a flashback to 97 years before the events of The 100, and Kadogan will also be seen on next week's flashback episode of The 100, which is supposed to be the setup for a potential spin-off series. Another really interesting thing he confirms in all of this is that Callie and Reese, who I believe were casted as the uh, male and female lead of the prequel series, are both Kadogan's children, which is something I don't think anybody predicted for those two characters, but that is what their lineage in, or history in the series is going to be. Now that that's all the information we have on Bill Kadogan, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope you learned something about this character going forward, because he's going to be um, playing a major role in the the end game for the series now and if you guys enjoyed this and you want to see more 100 content please leave a like subscribe and i'll catch you guys in the next video